Hello, my name is Paul Tranny, and I want to take you through the most recent update we've had to Photoshop CC the 2014 release. Rather than reading this dialogue, let's dive right in because it's all about 3D, 3D workflows, and 3D printing. And well, I'm just going to make a new file, okay? And what I can do now is I can get more content, and what I mean by that is even more 3D models are able to be imported uh, from a 3D file, and notice right down here you can import POY, U3D, VRML, which is the WRL file format, uh, 3D scans, whatever the case may be, but really all you need to do is grab whatever file format you want, put it on its new layer, and again, this is actually uh, a 3D scan. I can see it right here, and I can rotate it around and start to work with this. But what I want to do is I actually want to paint on it. So I will uh, select the brush tool and start painting accordingly, and that's what you typically do, but then you typically have to select the move tool and rotate it around and paint some more, or what you can do is you could actually use these controls right down in the lower Lower left. So as I paint, notice how I can rotate it around to say the backside, start painting some more, uh, maybe even change the color, but you can see how it doesn't disrupt my workflow uh, when I start to paint accordingly as I select again a different color and rotate and start painting again. Uh, so again that flexibility is what I want when it comes to uh, my workflow uh, is using these controls and getting that painted just right. Okay, well, Let's sort of take it to the next level if you will. And um, what I want to do now is I actually want to give it some grittiness. So I want to apply a bump map. Okay, so I'm going to go to 3D, and this is the material for this 3D object, this mesh. So I can apply a bump map to it. So I can say new texture. Okay, just click OK, and I can select edit texture. So typically you'll have a bump map in here and this could again be anything that you want. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in a photo. This is a photo of some marble. And what you can do with any photo is you can take any photo and turn it into a bump map. So uh, go to filter 3D generate bump map or you can even generate a normal map. And again it'll just uh, change it to black and white and smooth out some of those levels is what it does uh, but essentially that's all I need to do so closing that file you can see it's given her that sort of grittiness uh, which is exactly what I'm going for in this case and I can always uh, again uh, make that less of a bump if I want to as well so you have full control uh, whether it's an image like this maybe it's a, a different image entirely and again just to show you how you could uh, take a photo and turn it into uh, a bump map turning it black and white, turning into a mesh from that depth map, clicking create. This is a really extreme example, but you can see right here, that's what I've done with that particular photo. So you do have a lot of control, almost too much control in this case, and uh, I definitely want to change that, but I can 3D print this as well. So that gets to be uh, pretty exciting, and I can always invert that if I want the buildings to come out at you. Okay, uh, But nonetheless, going back to my file, in fact, I'm going to take this to the next level because what I can do now is I can select this scene and for this entire scene, I can print it out. Okay, So I'm selecting 3D print settings. Uh, you can always print to Shapeways or Sculptio if you're lucky enough to have a 3D printer. In fact, the fifth generation of MakerBot is supported, so you can select that, as well as the DMM.com if you're in Japan. But again, we support that file format. You can select that and click print and print this out, which is great. It'll do all that magic it needs to. Uh, but I'm going to take this to the next level because I'm going to turn off that layer. In fact, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to import uh, a more complex file. Okay, So this is another 3D model that has multiple parts and happens to be a scan. Okay, uh, Yes, very self-serving scan of uh, yours truly, and I uh, again, this is my pen holder, but I've composited multiple objects together. So what I'd want to do in these more complex cases is print this out, but really I want to take all these various meshes and 
what you could always do is pack those objects on the ground plane. So if you have an object uh, or a model that's made up of multiple objects, you can you know not only move everything onto the ground plane, but pack all those objects on the ground plane. You can see it spread it, spread those out. I can rotate that around. You can see what that looks like. Uh, but essentially, that's what's going on there is it's putting it all on one plane. I can print it out and then put it together myself rather than having to manually do that. All right, so going back into our print settings. Uh, it's going to be pretty large, but we will click this print button right down here. It will do all that magic that we need it to, uh, making sure the walls are thick enough for each one of these objects, uh, making them one solid mesh, repairing those meshes. All right, and here we are. Looks a little bit different, as you'll notice. In fact, a lot of times you'll see this orange, and that's basically the raft. So we'll, we'll print out that plane and just make sure everything will print in place. It also adds this scaffolding. So I'll turn off the raft. That's the scaffolding, which is the orange, because it can't start printing my hand in midair. Uh, but not only that, I'm easily previewing this. Notice how I can see the size. I can also see the various shadows added as well, just to give me a good idea of the size of this. And there's also the ray trace preview that you could turn on as well to get a clear representation of what's going on. Otherwise, it is WebGL. Now, there are other features in terms of 3D printing and other little details I can get into, but that's the gist of it. Check it out for yourself, and all you have to do is come up here to Creative Cloud and select Update.